We are on our paladin and we are in the glorious mother load. Yes, and the reason we are here is to talk nameplates. The reason I come to a dungeon like this is because it's a controlled space. I'm not worried about somebody coming in and killing my mobs. I'm not worried about rare suddenly spawning and attacking me. It's a nice controlled space where we can work on our UI in peace. And through the magic of editing, I of UI has appeared. We're going to be looking at the general tab because that is the master controller for everything else. There are two sub tabs in this. General, we will look at in a second. But there is also the color option. Yes, have you ever wondered why mobs are the color they are? Now they don't need to be. You can change this. By the way, all of this is overridden if you go into the colorblind option in WoW. So don't panic about that. But yeah, want to change the color of hostiles to a different one? Now you can. Now you may be thinking, hang on a minute, ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't want to start clicking stuff and messing things up and everything else. Panic not. Don't forget, like we talked about in our first LVUI video, we can go into profiles, we can create a copy of the current one we're working on, which means it's safe, it's backed up, we don't need to worry about it. So if we suddenly screw something up and we have no idea how to repair it, which I have done more than one occasion, we can just jump back in there and fix it. So general what are we going to play with what have we got to look at in here first up is cascading and overlapping nameplates now as you can see from mine i like to use stacking that basically means that the nameplates are all stacked on top of each other with a little bit of gap in between we're going to jump ahead slightly here but you can see these two sliding bars they change the stacking distance between the mobs as you can see there just change the stacking height our next option is overlapping. As you see, that compresses the nameplates down even more. The reason being is it tries as much as it can to attach the nameplate to the top of the mob. You may think, oh, that's way more difficult. But if you're playing as Mei Li, it actually makes it a lot easier because generally the mob that's at the very front will be the one nearest to you. Be the easiest to click on. I Meaning you just click on it, charge straight in, you're in the combat. As soon as you're in there, those nameplates will obviously spread out a little bit more. But at a distance, it's easy to just click and find the nearest target, which gives you something to run in and charge at. But like many of the options here, there is no right or wrong answer. It is what you prefer, what is the most beneficial to your gameplay. Toggling nameplates in and out of combat. We have the option for friendly and also enemy. Basically what this is going to mean is, if you are out of combat, do the nameplates show and then go off when you're in combat or vice versa. It's entirely up to you if you want this on or off. I have tried it. I've tried to go for that cinematic experience. You can see my action bars disappear when I'm out of combat. I've tried the same for nameplates, as I will show here. But I would just end up walking into that trash pack and it gets somewhat annoying. I would leave it default, which is disable, disable. And now, of course, the most important thing. How are our nameplates going to look? That is this option here, the texture. We can pick from a myriad of options. Go crazy. Pick the one that suits you. You're going to be looking at them a lot. So I suggest you pick something that you like. Low health threshold warning. This is one that I hardly ever even notice. I think it's because I probably play with a glow around the bars. But basically, and I'll show you a little clip now, what it's going to do is, even looking out for it, it's difficult to tell, is as the health goes below a certain threshold, it will give you a red glow, and then as it gets even lower, it will give you a yellow glow. As you get even lower, it will then give you a red glow. It's very hard to see, but you can see the mob that's now hitting me has actually got a yellow glow around it. When I target it, that glow then goes white. Blah! I just leave it as it is. As I say, I can hardly even tell it was there. So next we have a couple of tick box options. Most of them I don't tend to worry about. First one is, do you want the nameplate to click to the top or click to the bottom? Where is it going to be pinned? I tend to just leave it to the top. And then clamping. This one is quite useful, especially if you're melee. So let's say we have to run away from this target very quickly. Turn okay. it's crab, you're not helping here. Thank you. You can see that it stays anchored to our screen at all times. Doesn't matter where we go. It's going to stay anchored to that screen and show us that it's going to be that mob is behind us. If I'm ranged, I tend to try and stay far enough away that I can sort of, I can strife round and keep something in my line of sight. Whereas rain, whereas melee, obviously sometimes you may run far away. You still want to be able to see if it's casting, see if it's there and whereabouts. You can just turn around, charge straight back in. The next one up by default you're going to want this on is always show nameplates. If you've got your to combat toggles on, you may want to adjust this, may want to untick it, but we're going to leave it on. Always show player. I do not have player active at the moment, so it's not showing me any of that. If you had enabled that, you can tick that and select how you want it to go. Now, the interesting bit in this, we have pets and guardians and totems and so on that we can see if you're doing something like a horrific vision you may actually want the pet health bar active so you can easily see a visual representation 
of the pet's health so that you can heal it if need be. If it happens to be the thing that's tanking for you, if you're a warlock or with a hunter, you may want to be able to easily heal that pet. Updates. All I'm going to talk about with regards to this is read the warning, see what you think, and play about with it. See if it works for you. I tend to not even go near it, but uh, yeah, entirely up to you. On to click through. Exactly as the name would suggest, if we had, let's say, the enemy ticked, we would not be able to click on their nameplate. It would go straight through. Now, why would you want this? Let's say you're a tank in the middle of combat, or you have a tank in the middle of combat, you're a healer. You can literally click straight through the enemy and only click on your tank. Good if you're healing them and you don't want to worry about accidentally mousing over one of the enemy instead. But given that healers are now perceived to have to do damage in dungeons... That sometimes isn't great. You're going to want to, at some point, click on these nameplates, whether you're being assigned interrupt duty or whatever. Best to just leave these as they are and, uh, yeah, play around it. It's going to be more hassle than it's worth when that moment comes that you actually do want to attack something. On to clickable size. Yeah, clickable size is actually the box that surrounds that nameplate. So it isn't the red health bar. It's actually a far bigger box. The name is anchored to the top of that. So if we were to adjust the height and the width, that box you'd see would get much bigger. Then what we can do is we can adjust inside of that the actual size of the health bars. But there is actually a big chunky box right now. If you're old like me, you might want a really big click box so you don't miss it. That can be an issue with regards to just the amount of mobs on screen and how much space that's taking up. So again, entirely personal preference. I like everything we're talking about here. Cutaway bars, if any of you have seen... The way you get heal prediction, so i.e. you will be shown what the incoming heal is going to do to you. Cutaway does that in reverse. You can see here, there's a bright green chunk, then it disappears. That's the damage you're doing at that moment of time. And that's literally it. It's entirely an aesthetic choice. It's like having numbers going up your screen. You don't have to have them. It's an aesthetic choice whether you want to see it or not. Brah. Each, each to their own. Now, after that, once we're done killing, we have threat. Threat is one that I always keep on, and I tend to keep the threat levels where they are. As long as I can see that I've got threat on the target via my nameplate. And this will show me whether my thresholds are good or not. Default seems to work fine for me, and I have it active on every character. Because it doesn't matter what I'm on, I want to know whether I've got threat and whether that thing is charging towards me. And that is it. That is the end of the general settings. <gasps> Breathe. Go to get yourself a cup of coffee. Go get yourself a drink of water. Whatever it is you need. I need to take a quick break. And then we're going to go over to enemy NPC and targeting and all that other good stuff. <gasps> Breathe. I'll be back in two secs. So I'm back. I've had a drink. I hope you've had a drink. Whew, I can talk again. So before we get to the enemy NPC, we're going to look at targeting. As you can see before, I had those the little white bar around it. The little white box. And I also had the little arrows and everything. That is picked up by targeting. Pick whatever best suits you. You might like it super clean. I don't like making the mistake of my Avenger shield going way over to the mob over on the left. When I definitely don't want it to. So I like it blatantly showing me in a massive... Burp, 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 burp. You are targeting this thing right now. Is that the thing you meant to target? I'm getting old. Hey, don't judge me. Also, you've got here. Scale. Now, we're going to talk about filters coming up because there's a lot of very cool things you can do with it but just here on the targeting all the scale means is how big that's going to be doesn't affect it if you were to click off of it if i click something else you can see that that size actually transfers there you go it's just literally a, another way of indicating you are targeting this thing if you didn't want all the other bells and whistles and things around it Whew. now we can head over to enemy npc and this is a lot of functions a lot of things to play with here so let's get into it so we crack this off with general settings. Now, 99.9% .9 of these settings come from the general tab. But there are two extra. One is to literally show only the name of the mob. Hides the health bar, everything else. The other is to show the title. Entirely up to you when you want it more on. I most definitely do not have name only on. Visibility will take you back to the general tab. So you can start fiddling with the settings from there, as you can see. Next up, we have an important one, which is the health of a given mob. Now... Height is adjusted within the health tab, but if you want to change the width, that is actually the clickable box size you're starting to affect. So the height will go up to the maximum height of the box you've given, but the width, 100%, is done within the general tab, within the clickable box size. So as you can see, we can change our enemy size, change the width really high, really small, or sorry, really wide, or really, really small, 
entirely up to you but that's all done from in there only the height is done from in here little trick for you if you want to um, you want to really tidy your boxes up or you just want to show different types of information within the text box we can actually change this so within the text box we can change how it's shown you can either have it not showing at all or you can change percentage to current or you can start adding a ton more other options you can see we're changing it here but what you can actually do is go really crazy and you can add in things like the name of the mob. You can add in the level of the mob. You can add in your own text around that. If we do that now, I'll show you guys literally how crazy you can go. So I'll copy this in. This, by the way, will be in the description down below if you uh, you wanted to use this for yourself. Because you can then mean switch off the mob's name. As you can see, look, the mob name, the HP level everything else is now all within that health bar now yes it does stretch it out quite far especially if you've got a character or you've got a mob that you're fighting that has a long name that's gonna be huge power is one that nine times out of ten you'll probably want on during pvp you want on for enemy players because you want to see if a i don't know destruction warlock has all of their shards so they can start throwing chaos bolts at you or whatever else NPCs, not necessarily. You may want it on because you want to see if something's building up anger and then eventually it's going to become enraged when it reaches the max. It tends not to be as important as the next one, which is the cast bar. Now, I don't think I need to tell anybody how important it is to have the cast bar showing so that you're able to interrupt efficiently. You might not necessarily want the spell name. I would always have that on. The timer, mm, not so much. The yellow bar is going to tell me that. But if you do have the spell name and you do have the timer on, you may want to adjust your font size, which you can do right at the very bottom. You can change the font to suit the size that you can best see so you know what you're interrupting to make sure you're interrupting efficiently. Buffs and debuffs. At first glance, this might be something like, no, I don't want that cluttering my screen up. I don't need to see it. And maybe there's an argument for debuffs you don't want to see. But buffs are hugely important. The reason for that is there are buffs that we can potentially still spell still. It's easy for me to say off a mob. Or if you want to be that, again, clutch hero player, you can see that something is enraged and therefore you can get rid of that. You can purge it, cleanse it off of them, get rid of that. Don't want them hitting our tank any harder than it needs to. Buffs and debuffs are hugely important. Data, data, data. The more we can see visually, the more we can absorb, then the better it is going to be for us. Portraits. Yeah, if you really want the portrait next to the mob, you can have it. But uh, yeah, not for me. Not even I have that. And I have my portrait actually inside my health bar, as you can see down there. So yeah, but not even I have that one on. Level. This is kind of a hang up from the past because we have scaling now so that every mob that's around us is efficiently at our level. And if we are in a dungeon, we know stuff's going to be a high level in there. It's going to be hitting hard in the face. You don't necessarily need it on. I don't have level on. I switch it off. And there is a great little thing that can kind of aid us with that because obviously the level of 120 plus tells us that that is an elite there is a function down below you may be able to see it on the list now this is elite icon we're going to be looking at that in a sec name is the same you can yet yeah, have it part of your health bar you can not show it at all if you really don't want to i tend to just have it on because i like to know what i'm punching in the face pvp this is for guards so if you're walking around in the world you can switch on the pvp icon and that will show you if this mob is PvP marked, then it's probably a guard for an area. Watch your back. Najatar, more than once I've walked into the Alliance base. Yeah, wish I hadn't. The Elite Icon. This is a favourite of mine. So we've switched off the level of the character. So therefore, the 120 plus that tells us Elite isn't there. But with the Elite Icon, it will put a gold dragon onto a mob. This is handy if you are flying over an area. You want to nosedive down, like in Vale or Oldham. And you just want to see what's the elite in there, if there is one. What do I need to target? And then I can cleave down all the others that are around it. Also, horrific visions. It's good to know what you're about to walk into. Is there an elite in there? Is it something I need to worry about? So yeah, the icon is fantastic. Same as the quest icon. Okay, so we're out in the world now. So we can have a look at this quest icon in action. As you can see, the very extreme right hand end there is a tiny skull and that skull has a one in it meaning there is one of this left to kill were it to be a collection quest that would be a small bag and it would have the number of items you needed or if it was percentage based it would show you what the percentage was remaining on the quest so the last two options are title and xp i have both of those disabled if you want to give the mob a title you're more than welcome to uh, if you want to see the follow xp you might gain you can do it. it's not a problem 
And that is us done, ladies and gentlemen. I tried to bring this in under 15 minutes. I think I've most definitely failed. In the next video, which will be part two, and probably the final part of nameplates, I think we've covered this enough, will be an in-depth look at the style filter. This is not just an aesthetic thing. The style filter is an outstanding tool, and we will go into that in some depth. I look forward to seeing you all then. I hope this guide has helped. If um, if you have any feedback, any any wisdom or any guide that you can give, please, I would love to get any of your feedback. I need to go and lie down now. Have a good one, everybody, and I'll catch you all later.